Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of Modern Warfare Weapon Tactics. I'm Wheezy, and in this video we're going to be talking about engagement tactics for the SKS. Before we dive into details about engagement tactics with the SKS, first we want to discuss the strengths and the weaknesses of the weapon. So the first thing that we'll go over is the strengths of the SKS. The biggest strength the SKS has is a high headshot damage. Now, the SKS is a marksman rifle, and it's a semi-automatic rifle, um, but it can do a one-hit headshot kill at close to medium range. It's not until you get to a significantly longer range before you're no longer able to get that one-shot headshot. That is by far the biggest strength of this weapon. In addition to that, another strength is that it does two to three shot kills in the upper body. Now this is really important from a standpoint of how it impacts your time to kill if you're not getting precise headshots when you're in a, in a moving engagement. So the time to kill of the SKS is surprisingly fast for a marksman rifle um, and doesn't require quite as much discipline as something like the KAR uh, 98K or the MK2. Um, another strength of the SKS is that for a marksman rifle or for a semi-automatic rifle, including weapons like the FAL, the SKS has low recoil and a fast fire rate for a semi-auto. So this means that you can get faster follow-up shots with the SKS, which is an increased cadence as we've discussed in previous videos, as well as giving you decent survivability in close quarters engagements. Meaning that unlike some weapons like the FAL where I would suggest that you bring a secondary weapon um, using overkill, like a, a shotgun or an SMG, to help in close range engagements, with the SKS, that isn't really necessary. You can actually do decently well in close quarters, even though that's not the strength of this weapon. Another strength is that there's good mobility with the SKS, meaning that you can ADS quickly as well as move around the map relatively quick quickly. Which means that unlike with other sniper rifles and even some of marksman rifles, um, you can actually be reasonably aggressive with the SKS. The relatively low time to kill, high damage output, and high mobility of the SKS makes it so that you can really play it closer to a, a more aggressive weapon. I mean, you can't go all the way to full aggressiveness with the SKS, but it is a much better balance than other marksman rifles in the category. Um, and the last major strength, in my opinion, of the SKS is that it has low ammo consumption. So you don't start out with a lot of ammo, but since it's semi-auto, and because it kills in two to three shots to the body, or a single shot to the head, um, and oftentimes you'll find yourself getting one or two body shots and then recoiling up into a headshot, it actually doesn't use up a lot of ammo. So the default magazine size of 20 rounds is, is more than enough to support effective use of this weapon and it has a reasonably fast reload time so altogether there's a lot of strengths to the SKS and it's actually an extremely enjoyable weapon to use and quite powerful. So now let's discuss the weaknesses of the SKS and there's really only a couple. The first is that it's still semi-auto. So unlike some more versatile weapons um, in the AR and SMG category the SKS is a little bit more demanding. Uh, it requires a more consistent aim than something that you can more reliably spam fire like an automatic. So the degree of difficulty of using it well is quite a bit higher. Um, it also has a moderate time to kill when it comes to um, competing with autos without that headshot, right? So the single shot headshot is very powerful if you hit it because that's essentially a time to kill of zero. But if you don't get that, even with the semi-auto, even with you being able to fire relatively quickly with low recoil, you will still find yourself losing to high rate of fire autos on a consistent basis if you get in a lot of head-on-head -head fights. So, so the SKS, despite a lot of its strengths and its power and its flexibility as a semi-automatic weapon, still does encounter quite a few disadvantages when it comes to the flexibility of fully automatic weapons in Modern Warfare. So let's get into the discussion about what tactics we should use to effectively engage with the SKS. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is using medium sight lines for engagements. With the, with the balance of the SKS and its strength being its power, um, but its weakness being its lack of flexibility with being full auto, it's important to take advantage of that 
by maximizing your performance at medium range. So you don't necessarily want to rush into enclosed buildings with uh, and encourage close range engagement engagements because shotguns, uh, SMGs, and even the more high fire rate ARs are still going to have an advantage over your high powered SKS. And conversely, the damage drop off at distance of the SKS is significant. So if you're engaging an enemy at long range, like you would with more of a sniper rifle or like the KAR that has the ability to kind of get those one hit kills out at distance, the SKS can't really do that. Even a headshot at long range with the SKS is not going to be a one hit kill. So you don't want to try and use it as a uh, pocket sniper rifle. So we're going to focus on engaging at medium distance wherever possible and we're going to keep that in mind as we're moving through the map. Another thing that's important about engagement with the SKS is focusing on precision fire over rapid fire. Yes, the SKS has low recoil. Yes, you can actually spam fire the semi-auto SKS reasonably quickly, um, actually extremely quickly, but you will get much better performance if you make every shot count. It's a one-shot headshot and two to three shots to the chest. If you start hitting legs and arms, you're not going to get that kind of performance and you will struggle more and get frustrated with how the weapon performs. So make sure every shot counts. I would say take your time. You, can, you need to take your time and make sure that your shots are landing where you want them to in the chest or the head. However, you really can fire this more quickly than other semi-automatic weapons. So you'll find, as you start to get more experienced with it, that your rate of fire will be decently high, even when you're taking that extra half a heartbeat to make sure that you're letting the weapon come over the best part of your target before you start firing. Once you get that crosshair over center mass of your target, then when you start firing more quickly, you're going to start seeing that you're going to get two to three hit kills if you remain in the chest. And as the weapon starts to recoil up, if you bump up and hit a headshot, you're going to get an even faster time to kill. So it's quite a good weapon if you are very deliberate with how you fire and how you aim. Um, another thing that you can do with engagement in this, and this isn't something I would normally recommend for a weapon, but with the SKS, when you get into an unexpected close range engagement or a close range engagement that's necessary to support an objective, you can actually spam fire it with reasonable success. Um, and I say that not as you should keep it hip fired while you're firing, but as you're starting to transition to aim down sights to engage the enemy at close range, go ahead and just start firing. You've got 20 rounds in that magazine and it's two to three shots to kill. So if you start getting hits before you get aimed down sights, it's gonna give you a head start and you still have a decent chance of winning a fight at close range if as you're transitioning to aiming down your sights, you go ahead and start firing. Um, and then the final point we're gonna hit on with engagement is we wanna focus on having more deliberate engagements versus run and gun. And what I mean by that is even though the SKS is survivable at close range, it's a significantly versatile weapon and actually quite powerful, despite that, you will find that you have much more consistent success and you're much happier with it if you still play it tactically and you engage in deliberate battles, meaning you anticipate where enemies are going to be and you use cover and tactics to move there. With a more flexible weapon like an AR and SMG, you can do things like sprinting around and sliding around corners, you know, doing, doing uh, the more aggressive run and gun tactics. The SKS is not really built for that. So even though you can survive a close range engagement and actually be quite effective, that means that if someone comes around the corner and you have to engage them, you have a decent chance. But if you try to aggressively attack someone at close range that has an SMG, you're not going to be as successful. So focus on using the weapon to its strengths and not trying to force it into a role that it's not built for. It is not a close quarters weapon, so try not to play it that way, even though in a crunch it can help you survive if you get into a close quarters fight. So now let's discuss when it's a good idea to disengage with the SKS. This is a core part of any weapon tactics video to know not just when to fight with the weapon and how to fight with the weapon, but when to give up the fight with the weapon so that you can survive. So if you have cover at range, 
and you're taking significant damage with the SKS, you really ought to disengage from the fight. Although this is a rule of thumb for pretty much all weapons. Regardless of what weapon you're using, if you find yourself with cover and taking decent damage, it's probably in your best interest to take a break, let yourself heal up, and re-engage from a different position. It's no different for the SKS. At closer range, or when you don't have cover, with the lower recoil and the 2-3 to three hits to kill for the SKS, I would actually suggest that you stick out the fight. And what do I mean by that? If you don't have an easy escape route, rather than, than trying to turn and run and disengage, um, like with some weapons like the MK2 or the Car 98, where your, 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 your chances of success are so low that turning and running is probably your last hope, with the SKS's low recoil and high damage, your best bet is actually to try and continue that fight. You might die out there, but you will be much more likely to land those last couple of hits that you need or to get lucky with a headshot than you will to try and sprint away to some cover that you're not near. So if you have cover, use it. If you don't, just go ahead and try to win that fight. The SKS is a powerful weapon. And the last thing that I'll talk about with re-peaking is, in general with weapons, I discourage people from re-peaking because it gives your enemy an opportunity to anticipate you coming back, and that really puts you at a disadvantage. But with the SKS, if you're confident in your ability to get a headshot and you're at medium range, a quick re-peak and a couple of shots to get you a headshot can actually be quite effective. But for this, this is a personal limitation that you need to know about yourself. If you don't have that kind of aim and you can't pop out quickly and line up that headshot, then you're better off moving to a different location and re-engaging that same target from a different place where you might get them by surprise or just leaving that fight altogether. Um, but if you're comfortable with the SKS and you feel like you can hit that last shot or, or get that one hit headshot at medium range, then then you can probably give it a quick peek and have some decent success. So um, disengagement with the SKS is, is a bit more flexible than with some weapons because of the power that it has and the flexibility. Um, but those are would be my tips on, on when and when not to fight with the SKS. So let's summarize the high points from this video on the SKS. Number one, it is a one hit headshot at close to medium range. Number two, it is a two to three hit kill to the body. And number three, it can be fired quickly and accurately. These three facts combined make the SKS a very flexible and powerful weapon in modern warfare. For engagement, number one, we want to focus our engagements at medium range. Number two, we want to make every shot count. We want to make sure that we're firing accurately with this. And number three, we want to play deliberately, meaning move deliberately, and don't force the SKS into a run and gun roll, which it's not going to be built for. All of these things combined make the SKS a really enjoyable weapon to use. I loved playing with it. I was surprised at how effective it was. I thought it would be more of a struggle bus like the FAL was, and it just wasn't. It's actually a surprisingly effective weapon. Uh, I hope you guys got a lot of useful information out of this video, and stay tuned for more. I'll talk to you later.